So, hello once again, dear students. We shall continue our discussion of subgroups and cyclic subgroups this morning. Okay. Recall that we have defined subgroup last time as a subgroup of a group G is a subset of G such that it forms a group with respect to the operation defined in G. Okay. And one example that we have cited is the set of in even integers with respect to the operation addition. It's a subgroup of the set of the set of additive group of integers. And we were able to okay, prove or justify that. Now, some theorems in relation to groups are as follows. If H is any subgroup of a group G, then the identity element of G is in H, and it's also the identity element of H. And we were able to show that in our, in our previous example, okay? For instance, the set of even integers, okay, with respect to the operation addition, the identity element is zero, okay, which is in fact the identity element also of the set of integers with respect to the operation addition. The second theorem says a subset H of a group G is a subgroup if and only if it satisfies two conditions. Number one, H is not an empty set. And number two, for every pair of elements A and B in H, the product A times B inverse is an element of H. Okay? Furthermore, every group has a unique identity element. And since a subgroup is a group, it must have an identity and that every group has at least two subgroups. We have what we call the trivial subgroups, which consists of the group itself and the group consisting of the identity element. Okay, so these are trivial subgroups. Now, how do we identify the subgroups of a group? For example, um, Z sub 6. Can you identify all the subgroups of Z sub 6? That's what we are going to show this morning. Okay, so list down or identify all the subgroups of Z sub 6 under the operation addition modulo 6. Now recall that Z sub 6 has the elements 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay, and we are looking into the operation addition modulo 6. Now remember that the identity element here is 0. Okay, the identity element is 0. Now if we go back to the previous theorems, okay, particularly... Uh, the first one, let me underscore, the identity element of G must be in H. And in fact, it should be the identity element of H. Okay? So keep that in mind when you'll be forming subgroups. Now, how do we identify the subgroups of a specific group? For instance, Z sub 6. We pick out an element of Z sub 6 and add it to itself for several times. We will only stop until we get the identity element 0. Okay, let's begin with 0. If I add 0 to itself for several times, I'll end up with just the element 0. Okay, nothing more. Now we move on to the next element, 1. Adding 1 to itself for several times will yield 1 plus 1, 2 plus 2, 3 plus 1, 4 plus 1, 5 plus 1, 6. However, this is in modulo 6, so 0. What about 2? Adding 2 to itself and then 2 plus 2 is 4. 4 plus 2 is 6. 
modulo 6 is 0. Then 0 plus 2, 2, we get back to the first element. And so we stop there. How about 3? Okay, so for 3, 3, 3 plus 3 is 6, but 6 modulo 6 is 0. Okay, what about 4? 4, 4 plus 4 modulo 6 is, is 2. 2 plus 6, a uh, 2 plus 4 rather, 2 plus 4 modulo 6 is 0. Okay, 5, the last element of Z sub 6 which is 5. Okay, 5, 5 plus 5 is, okay, 5 plus 5 is 4 modulo 6. Okay. 5 plus 5 plus 5, 15, modulo 6 is 3. 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5, modulo 6 is 2. 5 plus 5 plus 5, modulo 6 is 1. And then 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5, modulo 6 is 0. Take note that this is the same as the second already. Okay, so let's look into what we have generated. 0 and then 2, 4, 0, of course this one which is the set itself. And then 3, 0, 4, 2, 0. So how many subgroups are there? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 subgroups. And so for Z sub 6, we have generated the following subgroups. 0, that group consisting of the identity element, which is considered to be a trivial subgroup. That generated by 1, that generated by 2, that one which is generated by 3, by 4, and by 5, which is in fact the same as that one generated by, by 1. Now, now, when we say order of an element, order of an element, we mean number of elements in the subgroup generated by that element. So if I would say, if I would ask you now, what is the order of 0? 1. What is the order of 1? 6. Okay. The order of 0 is 1, 1 element. The order of 1 is 6, 6 elements. The order of 2 is 3. The order of 3 is 2. The order of 4 is 3. Okay? So that is what we mean by order of an element. Order of an element is the number of elements in the subgroup generated by that element. So looking at Z sub 6, its order, the order of the elements are as follows. Order of 0 is 1. Order of 1 is 6. Order of 2 is 3. Order of 3 is 2. Order of 4 is 3. Next theorem. If A is an element of G, then H is equal to H is equal to A raised to K, where K is an element of the set of integers, is a subgroup of G. Okay, remember that's how we generated the, okay, this is how we generated the subgroups of Z sub 6. In fact, this came from, this one came from, 0 raised to 1, 0 raised to 2, 0 raised to 3, okay? 0, okay? 0 squared means 0 plus 0, 0 cubed means 0 times uh, plus 0 plus 0. Because remember, our operation is addition. So 1 here is 1, okay? This is obtained by raising 1 to k where k is an integer so 1 raised to 1 1 raised to 2 1 raised to 3 1 raised to 4 1 raised to 5 1 raised to 6 what do we mean by 1 squared 1 squared does not mean 1 times 1 but we mean 1 plus 1 because our operation here is addition okay how about this this is generated by 2 raised to 1, 2 raised to 2, 2 raised to 3, 2 raised to 4, 2 raised to 5, and 2 raised to, okay, to 6. Okay, 2 raised to 6. In like manner, this is obtained from 3 raised to 1, 3 raised to 2. Because if you have 3 raised to 3, then this is equal to 3 plus 3 plus 3 modulo 6, okay, modulo 6. That would be, okay, 3. And it gets back to the first. So it will give the same result, 3, 0. Okay, so that's what the theorem is all about. The theorem says if A 
is an element of G, then the subgroup H could be formed by simply, okay, adding to itself, multiplying to itself, or raising A to the K, where K is an element of Z. That will form a subgroup of G, okay? Now, now let's have Z sub 12 under modulo addition, okay? Set of, again, set of remainders upon division by 12 has the element 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. So just the same, the subgroups, find all the subgroups of KZ sub. Okay, the theorem says H could be generated by A raised to K such that K is an element of Z. Z sub 12 has 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. Okay, we begin with 0. Again, 0 will just give 0. Next, 1. Okay, what about 1? 1 will generate 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 0. Okay? Next, how about 2? Two? 2, this is from 2 raised to 1, 2 squared, but 2 squared means 2 plus 2. Take note of our operation. 2 cubed means 2 plus 2 plus 2. Okay? And so on and so forth. So, what is the set generated by 2? 2, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 0. Okay? Because from here, if we add 2, then it will give the first element that we have already listed, which is 2. So, we stop here. Now, we proceed to the next element, which is 3. Okay, 3. So, 3 plus 3. 6 plus 3, 9 plus 3, that's uh, 12 modulo, 12 is 0. So we stop with, with that. Okay, next, how about 4? Okay, what about 4? So for 4, we have 4, 4 plus 4, 8, 8 plus 4, 12 modulo, 12 is 0. Next, how about 5? Okay, let's see what happens with 5. If we have 5, then that will be 5 plus 5. Okay, 5 plus 5, that's 10. Plus 5 modulo 12 is 3. Okay, and then 20 modulo 12, 8. Okay, 25 modulo 12, 1. Next, 30 modulo 12, 6. Next, 35 modulo 12. Once more, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Okay. So for 30, modulo 12, 6, correct? 2, 4, 6, 5, 10, 15. Okay. 35, modulo 12, modulo 12 is 11. Plus 5, that's 40, modulo 12 is 4. Okay. Plus 5 is 9. Okay. Plus 5 is, okay. 9 plus 5, that's 14, modulo 12, 2. Okay. Plus 5, 7. Plus 5, 12, okay. Did we generate all the elements? Let's see. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. Okay. Next, we have, this is the same uh, as that generated by, take note that they were able to generate exactly the same okay, elements, 1 and 2. 5. Okay, what about 6? So for 6, so for 6, we have 6 plus 6 is 0. Okay, plus 6, it gets back to 6. So maybe we stop with that. Okay, so these are some of the subgroups of Z sub 12. I want you to find other subgroups if there are other subgroups. So how many subgroups have we generated? This is trivial subgroup. This one, again, is a trivial subgroup, okay? Trivial subgroup. In like manner, that one generated by 1 is also trivial. And that one generated by 5 is also a trivial subgroup. So, gener uh, that one generated by 2 has an order of 2, 4, 6. Order of 6, this subgroup has an order of 6. Number of elements, okay? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This one has an order 
po, 4. This one has an order of 3. And this has an order of okay, 2. Okay, so 2 elements are generated. Now, how sure are we that the generated is really the set generated after adding the element to itself for multiple times is a subgroup? Now, let's particularly look into this. Okay, number one, closure property. Is it satisfied? 6 plus 6. 6 plus 6 modulo 12 is 0. It's there. Okay, 0 plus 6 modulo 12 is 6. So, it's closed. Closure property is satisfied. And you can check on associative. Okay. And number three, number three, is there an identity element? Yes, it contains the identity element zero. And do these elements have inverses within the set? Yes, inverse of six is six because six plus six is zero. And inverse of zero is zero. Zero plus zero is zero. Now let's try this. What about uh, the group generated by three? Okay. Is it really a subgroup? Now let's check on the properties. 6 plus 9, 6 plus 9, 12, okay? 6 plus 9, let's first check on closure. 6 plus 9 modulo 12 is 3. There it is. What about 3 plus 9? 3 plus 9, okay? 3 plus 9 modulo 12 is 0, okay? How about 9 plus 9? 9 plus 9 modulo 12 is 6. Okay, 9 plus 9 modulo 12 is... How about 3 plus 3? 3 plus 3 modulo 6 is 6. How about 6 plus 6? 6 plus 6 modulo 12 is 0. So, the set is closed. Okay, is there an identity element? Yes, the identity element is 0 and it's part of the set. Okay, and do all elements have inverses? What's the inverse of 9? Okay, 9 inverse is 3 because 9 plus 3 is 12 and 12 modulo 12 is 0. What's the inverse of 6? 6. 6 plus 6 is 12. 12 modulo 12 is 0. How about inverse of 3? The inverse of 3 is 9. 9 plus 3 is 12. 12 modulo 12 is zero. Therefore, all of these are subgroups of the group G, okay? Or subgroups of Z sub 12 under addition modulo 12, okay? Next, we move on to the next problem, okay? Problem number three. Find all the subgroups of S sub 3. Okay, recall your S sub 3 or the set of, of permutations on N symbols, of three symbols, and we represented the permutations as follows. Alpha, okay, with this arrangement. Beta, gamma, delta, phi, and rho. Okay, so we have uh, worked on it last time. And we were able to fill out the table for the operation, okay, multiplication. Okay, and we filled out the table here. For alpha, circle R, alpha times alpha, we have alpha, okay? Beta times alpha is beta, and so on. So, may I, okay, draw your attention to the first row and the first column, or second row and second column, rather. So, from here, we can... Uh, identify right away the identity element. So we have already established in the past that S sub 3 is a group. Okay, it's a group under the operation uh, multiplication. Okay, the identity element of which is the element or should I say alpha. Okay, so the identity element is alpha. We're moving on to S sub 3. Or a set of permutations, okay, whose elements are alpha, beta, gamma, delta, phi, delta, phi, and rho. Now, let's identify subgroups of S sub 3. Now, going back to our theorem, the theorem says the subgroup is generated by raising an element to k such that k is an element of the set of integers. Okay, so multiplying 
an element by itself for several times. So we begin here by considering the element alpha. Okay, let's begin with alpha. I think what will be generated if we do alpha? So we start with the element. alpha what will be what will be generated if we have alpha raised to 1 alpha raised to 1 alpha squared where alpha squared here is alpha circle alpha okay alpha cube means alpha circle alpha circle alpha okay so what is alpha circle alpha let's go back to our table so going back alpha circle alpha is alpha Okay, so this will generate the element alpha only. Because if we proceed to getting alpha to the third, means alpha circle alpha circle alpha, then you'll end up with alpha circle alpha, which is alpha. Okay, next, how about beta? Okay, so for beta, what is beta raised to 1, beta raised to 2, beta raised to 3, and so on. Okay, so beta raised to 1 is simply beta. Beta squared means beta circle beta. So look into the table for beta circle beta, which is? alpha okay so beta circle beta is alpha so your answer here the our answer here is once more beta circle beta is alpha okay equals alpha next how about beta cube? Beta cube means, okay, this one means beta, circle beta, circle beta. What will it be? First, beta circle beta is alpha. Circle beta, what is this equal to? Beta. And it gets you to the first answer. So that means we have to stop with this. Okay, so what was generated, what is generated rather by beta? The set consisting of beta and alpha. Okay, remember what I said a while ago, the moment you obtain the identity element, then you stop okay, multiplying that uh, element to itself. Okay, so we know for a fact that for your S sub 3, the identity element here is alpha. Okay? The identity element is alpha. Look at this. Okay? So I want you to look at the, the second column and the second row. Okay? Identical to the first, identif identical to the first column. These entries are identical to the uh, first row which means the identity element must be alpha. So, let's proceed. How about delta? What about delta? So, here we have, let me just underscore what we have already generated. Okay, and then this is the second. Next, okay, what about 
um, gamma. What about gamma? So what will be uh, generated by gamma? So after multiply, multiplying gamma to itself, gamma raised to 1, gamma raised to 2, gamma raised to 3. Okay, gamma raised to 1 is gamma itself. Gamma uh, squared is gamma, circle gamma. What is this equal to? We go back to the table. Gamma, circle gamma is, okay, gamma, circle gamma is, okay, alpha. Okay, gamma, circle gamma is alpha. Okay, so it's alpha. So we may not proceed with this anymore. Okay, so the set generated by gamma is okay, gamma alpha. Next, how about delta? Okay, what about delta? What is delta raised to 1, delta raised to 2, okay, delta raised to 3? Okay, let's see. Delta raised to 1 is delta itself. Delta squared means delta, circle delta. Go back to the table and check on the result. Delta, circle delta. It's more delta, circle delta is phi. Okay? Delta, circle delta is phi. So that means we have to proceed. Let's continue. What about delta to the fourth? Okay, so this means delta, okay, delta, circle delta, circle delta, circle delta. But we found out already that Delta to the third is phi. So phi times delta, let's see. Phi times delta is alpha. Okay? Phi times delta, phi times delta is alpha. Okay? So this is equal to alpha. Okay, so that one generated by the delta, therefore, consists of delta, phi, and alpha. Next, how about for phi? What about phi? I so let's see. What is phi raised to 1? Phi raised to 2? Okay, phi raised to 3? Okay. okay, what is phi raised to 1? It's phi itself. Phi times phi or phi times phi. Phi times phi, phi times phi. Okay, let me highlight. Phi times phi or phi times phi is delta. Okay, so delta. This one results to Delta. What about phi cube? Phi cube means phi times phi times phi circle phi. Phi circle phi circle phi. But we found out from the previous that phi circle phi is delta. So delta circle phi. Let's look at that. Delta circle phi is... So let's copy all the sets that we have generated. The set consisting of the identity element. Let's put it here. Okay, next, we have the set consisting of these elements. Next, we have that one generated by um, gamma. Next, that set generated by uh, delta. Next, that set generated by phi. So, we have, okay. And the last one, that set generated by rho. Okay, so let's see which among these satisfy the two conditions. Remember that an um, H is considered to be a subgroup of G if H is non-empty and that for any pair A, B in H, then A times B inverse should be in H. Okay, so let me write that. For any pair A and B in H, okay, the product A times B inverse is an element of H. Okay, so let's look into the sets that we have generated definitely alpha circle alpha alpha inverse is alpha therefore this is a group definitely how about beta and alpha the group consisting of the elements beta and alpha recall okay going back to the table that our inverses the identity element is alpha and the inverses are as follows alpha inverse alpha inverse is alpha beta inverse is so look along the column for beta and search for the identity element alpha what was multiplied to beta to get alpha it's beta so beta inverse is 
beta itself. Next, gamma inverse. Okay, so for gamma inverse, gamma inverse is gamma itself. Okay, so gamma. Next, for delta inverse, delta inverse, what is it equal to? Let's look into the table. Delta multiplied to phi results to the identity element. So, inverse of delta is phi. Okay? Inverse of delta is phi. Next, phi inverse, phi inverse. So, let's look into the column for phi or the row for phi. Phi, when multiplied to delta, gives alpha. There, okay? So, phi inverse is, once more, P inverse is delta. Okay, P inverse is delta. Delta. Next, rho inverse is K okay, rho inverse. Rho times rho is equal to the identity element A, which means that the inverse of rho is rho itself. Okay, so rho. So let's see whether the second condition is satisfied by the groups that we have generated. So, for the first, for the second rather, so we're done with the first, how about number two? Is beta times beta inverse found in the set? Okay, what is beta inverse? Once again, beta inverse is beta, okay? Beta inverse is beta. Alpha inverse is alpha itself. Beta inverse is beta. Gamma inverse is gamma itself. Delta inverse is phi. Phi inverse is delta. And rho inverse is rho. Okay? So, beta circle beta inverse, what is it equal to? Beta circle beta inverse is simply beta circle beta because beta inverse is k beta and then beta circle beta is alpha okay it's alpha the answer here is alpha it's found in the set how about how about alpha circle beta inverse that would mean alpha circle k okay, alpha circle beta and alpha circle beta, alpha circle beta is beta itself, okay? So, beta. So, this one then is a... Next, how about these are, take note that these are exactly the same, okay? They are exactly the same, phi, phi, okay, phi with phi, delta, delta, alpha, alpha, okay? Then we have... Oh, this is one, this is different. Alpha times, okay, alpha N. So here, let's label this as number 3, okay, number 4, and number 5. 4 and 5, anyway, these two anyway are the same because they have exactly the same elements. How about checking for number 3? So let's check on number 3. What is, is the identity element contained in the subgroup? Yes. The identity element is alpha. How about the inverse of gamma? The inverse of gamma is gamma itself. Okay? So, this is also a group. How about number four? Okay? Delta, circle delta, is, it, uh, is the answer found in this set? Delta, circle delta, delta, circle delta, let's see. Delta, circle delta, is equal to phi. Is phi found in the set? Yes. Next, phi circle delta. Let's see. Phi circle delta is equal to alpha. Okay, alpha is found in the set. Next, how about delta circle delta? Okay, let's see. Delta circle delta is equal to, okay, phi is also found in that set. Phi circle phi. Phi, circle phi is delta and delta is also found in the set. So this one satisfies closure property, okay? Satisfies closure property. How about identity? There it is. Identity element is alpha. Inverses, inverse of phi. What did we say? Inverse of phi is delta. It's here, okay? Next, inverse of delta. Inverse of delta is Phi and phi is found in that small set. Therefore, this is a okay subgroup. Finally, how about k okay, rho and alpha? Okay, rho circle rho. 
rho, circle rho is alpha. Okay, and that's it. And uh, rho, rho times rho inverse. What is rho inverse? It's rho. Okay, so this means rho, circle rho is equal to alpha and it's found in the set. And there you have alpha in the set. So these are the subgroups of, okay, so the subgroups of S sub 3. These are the subgroups of S sub 3. So for your assignment, I want you to look into the subgroups of the set of symmetries of a square. Find all the subgroups of the set of symmetries of a square. Okay, that's for your assignment. Find all the subgroups of the set of symmetries of a square. Okay, set of symmetries of a square. Remember that set consisting of the elements R sub O, R sub 1, R sub 2, R sub 3, X, Y, D1, and D2 under the operation multiplication. Okay? So, for your assignment, find all the subgroups of this set with respect to the operation multiplication.